Hey guys, I have a little bonus video for you today and I was requested to see if I could set up a GraphQL server with data loader in PHP. So what I'm going to show you is how I set this up. I got some code working and as you see right here, here's the GraphQL schema. Now I want something super simple, but at the same time we could see um, how it worked with data loader. So I have a person which has a pet. So when I use this query get people, it's going to return a array of persons. And uh, what we want to happen is each time we're going to uh, get a person, so let's say there's two people, then the first person is going to have a pet and the second person is also going to have a pet. So it's going to be two queries. So we're going to use data loader so we don't have to do two queries, we'll only do one. But we'll talk more about that in a second. So this code is on GitHub if you want to check it out, but I'm just going to be walking you through it. And uh, in index.php, this is where everything all begins. So I'm using two libraries, well, really three libraries. This overblog one, which is for data loader. Siler, which is really um, for GraphQL, uh, setting up the server and whatnot, and handling HTTP requests, and also this GraphQL uh, library. So both of those are helping with GraphQL. And then right here, this is for setting up cores. So I can actually request stuff from the server. And for this example, I also connected it to a database. So this is connecting to a MySQL database and uh, it's on localhost. And I basically just set up a schema that was uh, matches the GraphQL uh, database. And I also have a, uh, or the GraphQL schema, I mean. And I also have a the SQL for that if you want to run and set this up locally. But anyway, we connect to the MySQL database and we now have an instance in, or related to that. And so I have a little function here called SQL. And uh, what this does is it takes a SQL query and just runs it on the database and uh, returns whatever the uh, result of that SQL query is and then fetch all will give you all the rows. Okay, we're gonna come back to this bit right here. This is with uh, how data loader is working. And uh, yeah, we'll come back to that in a second. Next thing is actually basically just starting up the server. So you'll see I am including a schema right here and I'm listening for post requests. That's what this is doing. And for each post request, I initialize the schema and uh, set it up and it's lazy loading, I believe. And uh, so it initializes the schema and inside the schema is uh, our resolvers. And we'll look at that in a second. And you'll notice I'm also passing in the context um, to initialize this GraphQL basically server. And so our context is right here. And you'll notice I'm passing in two things, the pet loader, which gives us access to doing data loader things. And the second part is a SQL function. So uh, this is for me being able to do SQL um, inside of resolvers. Okay, so next let's look at uh, schema.php. So schema.php sets things up by reading my schema.graphql. So that's what we just saw right here. So it reads that and it also reads the resolvers and creates a schema out of it. So we're gonna check out what the resolvers look like next. So I made this, again, very simple. So we only have two resolvers. The first one is get people. So this, and you'll notice uh, the structure of this. We have an object at the top and inside of that object are our queries or our uh, root uh, things that we wanna resolve. So we'd like to resolve the query type and we'd like to resolve the person type. So to resolve the query type, uh, there's going to be a field called get people and that's what we saw right here. So the type query and then get people and um, That's how we got the names for that and the name for that and then here's the function to actually handle uh, this request or this query and To do this we're going to be grabbing basically just calling that uh, function that we were passed into context right so if we come back over here. That's this function right here we're just calling that SQL function that we set up. And what we're doing is we're just selecting the name and ID uh, for all the people. So the table called people uh, we're grabbing. But you'll notice 
that'll only fulfill this one. We also want to be able to get the pet. So how, we're going to be resolving that on an individual basis. So for each person, and again, that name matches up with the name here, that type. And uh, the field that I want to resolve is pet. So again, that's because we have the name of right here called pet. So all those names match up. So inside of person type, we want to resolve the pet field. Uh, we could also resolve the name field if we wanted to, but we're already getting the name field from this query. Okay, so here I'm doing two things. So first, I am accessing the context, the pet loader. So this is for data loader, and I am loading in the root ID. So what is going on there, right? Well, what I'm doing is I'm loading. So what root has access to is what um, the person, any fields that we have in the person already. So I can either get from root the name or the ID because those two fields we've already fetched from the database um, when this function is getting called. So it's inside of root. So I'm accessing root.id. So I'm passing in to the pet loader the ID of the person. And we're going to use that later to look up the pet for a person because if we have the ID, so right, we have the ID of the person, we can look up their pet. And then lastly, I am just wrapping this in data loader.await because this is an asynchronous request. Um, and so we need to wait for that. Okay, so that's how that's working. So let's just go back to the last part. And that is how this magic works with data loader and loading this in. So there's just like some configuration that you do have to do to like set up, I guess, promises slash asynchronous stuff in PHP. Not quite sure, but that's what this junk is doing right here and this junk is doing right here. So you don't really have to worry about um, exactly what it's doing. It's just setting up, I guess, synchronous promises. That's what those are doing. So let's look at pet loader. Um, this is a new data loader function, and we're gonna, or new data loader object, and we pass in as a parameter a function. And also we pass in the promise adapter, which is this thing. So as a parameter to this function, we're gonna get keys. So the keys that we passed in are whatever we load with. So over here we loaded with the uh, ID of the person. So we're gonna get a bunch of IDs for people. And the first thing we're gonna do is just join them into basically a list, or sorry, a string, because we have like a list of keys. And so what that's gonna give us is uh, just help us build the query. And uh, we don't really have to worry about what this ID map is doing right now. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, in our rows, we are. Uh, this is just what we get back from the query. So this is us selecting um, the owner, the is dog, and the sound. So these are the three fields that we can get from pets. So is dog sound, and then owner is the foreign key to person. Oops. So we're fetching these fields and we're fetching them for um, all the ones where we're getting all the pets where the owner is uh, one of the IDs that we have. So that's our query. So next, what we need to do is uh, return the data that we just got. So we're not just, notice how we did all of the uh, SQL for pets in one statement right here. We're not fetching pets for each user. So we next have to break it out per user. So when I did array flip, we now have in the ID map, um, the ID of that owner. So now we can set uh, in our ID map, just the uh, owner of, uh, so we're looping through the rows, we're saving the owner, uh, the ID, and mapping that to the value of the row. So now we have cre basically are creating a map or a dictionary where the keys are the IDs of the owner and the value is is dog sound. Um, and that's what we need. So at the very end, um, we're just getting the values of this. Um, and we just wanna make sure this is in the exact same order. And that's what all this logic is doing. Um, and that's why we uh, flip around this array to make sure we uh, get the keys. So for example, if parent one, the ID of one, and let's, is it, okay, yeah, so if we have an ID of one, two, like that, what we wanna do is with our ID map 
is say like one maps to the row um, is dog and I guess something like that is going to be uh, true and sound is going to be bark and whatnot and then so on and then we're going to get uh, two and then what its value is and what we want is we want to make sure that the very first value maps to the first value so like if we were to rearrange this if two was there and one was here right so that so whatever order we get the keys in we want to make sure we return um, them in the same order so the parents ID of two should get the value two or the you know which pet is the owner uh, owner two its data for pets should go there but anyway that's kind of just like the details of how data loader works you need to just make sure the same order you get the keys in you return the data in um, but as far as the PHP part we uh, do this promise adapter create all and that just like I guess resolves the promises slash creates promises not quite sure but we need that and this is just the array of all our data yeah, so that is pretty much it of how the PHP stuff is working. It was quite weird for me to figure this all out, and I'm pretty new to PHP. Um, so if you have any suggestions on how to prove this, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you that are familiar with PHP would know better practices in some of these areas, but at least you'll get an idea of um, some working GraphQL code in a GraphQL server, so you can now uh, expand this if you needed to. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.